Okay, so welcome to Coach Wiegand's damn video lecture. Your instructions today are going to be a little bit different. You're going to watch this lecture. You're going to take scratch notes as you view it. Now, any damn vocabulary, you're going to add to that list that we already started in our notebook. And you're going to summarize key points and ideas on a separate sheet of paper. This next slide is a summary of the vocabulary and the ideas to look out for as you watch this damn video. You can pause this now, but you do not need to write these down in your notebook and show them to me. These are the things you should be listening for and looking for as you watch. So here's a river, and all that river is is a collection of runoff water that is going someplace. But we have discussed and we understand that the amount of runoff isn't always the same. On days where it rains a lot, this river is going to have more water in it because there's more runoff. Places where there's a lot of impervious surfaces, there's going to be more runoff. And when it rains, this river is going to get extra runoff in it. Well, that river can only handle a certain amount of runoff. And if too much runoff goes in the river, we get a flood, which is no good. So the question becomes, how do we prevent floods? How do we control the amount of runoff that's moving through this river? Well, the number one thing that is done to control the amount of water in a river is that right there. This is a man-made structure. This is something we did, we built to control the water in the river. This is a dam. A dam, by definition, is a man-made barrier that controls the amount of water in a river. And you can see in this picture right here, we're letting lots of water come through that dam right now. Because if you look at the sky, it's not gonna rain today. But if you were gonna storm tomorrow and we knew it was gonna rain a lot, we would close those openings in the dam and make there be less runoff in the river because we know it's gonna rain and the river is going to get higher. So once again, by definition, a dam is a man-made barrier that's meant to control the amount of water in a river. This back here behind me is Morgan Falls Dam, which is one of the many dams along the Chattahoochee River, even in our area. This one's in Sandy Springs. And what this dam does is help us control the amount of water that comes through the river and keeps it from flooding every time it rains hard. So this is the dam at Martin's Landing, and it holds back all of that excess runoff water from when they built the neighborhood. Now think about all the water in that lake. It would have gone in the Chattahoochee River, which the river wouldn't be able to handle and the river would flood. So the dam is there to hold back some of the water and only let this little bit of water go into the Chattahoochee River at a time, which won't cause flooding. So the number one reason to build the dam, to control the amount of water that goes in a river and prevents the river from flooding. Now floods, remember that what a flood is, is when water comes out of its normal boundaries and go where we don't want it to be. Usually this is from times when it rains hard and especially in areas that we have a lot of impervious surfaces, but a certain amount of flooding is always natural. Here I am in Dallas, Texas, and this is the Trinity River, which is the main river that flows through Dallas. Now, if you look around, the land in Dallas is pretty flat, which means the water doesn't move very fast. You can see this water in this river is just kind of sitting here. Well, this creates a problem when it rains a lot. When it rains a lot and you get a lot of runoff that comes into the river, because the land is so flat, the water doesn't move away very quickly. So that means the river fills up rather quickly and the river comes out of its banks very easily. This is not as much a problem where we live in Atlanta because the land is steep. So even though it rains really hard and we get a lot of runoff, because our land is steep, our water runs off pretty quickly and gets out of the way and doesn't cause as much flooding. But here in Dallas, the land is really flat so the water just kind of hangs out and it comes out of the river. Now this wide area here beside the river, you'll notice I'm in downtown Dallas. I'm in the middle of the city and there are no buildings, there are no houses, no apartments or office buildings, parking lots, roads, anything in this big area here beside the river. This area here beside the river 
tends to flood. It is the flood plain for the river. A flood plain is a wide, flat area next to the river where the water tends to come out of the river and flood. Because of that, you don't build in the flood plain. You could build a house over there, but the first time you get a summer thunderstorm and it rains really hard, your house is going to flood. If you have a business over there, it's going to flood, and it would be a total loss. Well, you have to expect that these rivers here are going to flood. So here in Dallas, they don't allow anything to be built in this big wide area here alongside the river. And this gives all of that runoff water a place to go because the river can't handle it. So a floodplain is a really wide flat area next to a river that tends to flood. And if you're smart, you won't build anything there because it's just going to get ruined when you know the river is going to flood. Here's the view of the Trinity River from the air. You can see it's right in the middle of the city. And look at that big, wide open area beside the river. It's flat. That's the floodplain. The floodplain is that flat area next to a river where the water tends to go in flood when the river overflows. Here in Georgia, we get something like this. There is no floodplain in this picture, even though there is a river, because it's so steep. And as soon as the water gets in the river, it goes running off downhill. There's no wide, flat area where the water kind of escapes the banks of the river and goes and hangs out. There is no floodplain area. Floodplains are flat areas beside rivers. Now, the problem with floodplains is that people like to live near the river. People build their houses next to rivers. And when the river gets too much water in it and it comes out of its banks, it goes into that floodplain and damages your house. Think about this right here. If it rains too much and this river gets too much water in it, the water is going to come out and it's going to go right where the houses are. Something like this right here. These houses were all built in the floodplain. Here's our river. It got too much water in it. The water came out and is hanging out in here where our houses are. Not a good situation. So why should you care? I always try to give you some application of, of what we're learning about in this class. Like how will this affect you at some point in your life? Well, in a word, your wallet, money, insurance. You have to pay insurance on your house every month in case something happens to it, like a fire or a tornado, any kind of natural disaster, including floods. Well, the amount of money you pay kind of depends upon what are the chances that your house is going to have damage from an event. So we'll consider these two houses here. This house here is in the floodplain. It's right next to the river. If this river gets too much water in it, and that's what happens to rivers, the water is going to come out and go right to where that house is. But this house up here is not in the floodplain. It's way uphill. The water is not going to wind up going way uphill. So house number one is has a lot less chance of having damage from a flood. So here I am down at the end of Eves Road, and that in front of me is the Chattahoochee River. And we know that the water level in the rivers can change, and if it rains too much and we get too much runoff, water can come out of the river. That's a flood. Well, I want to call your attention to what this land looks like right here. Notice the land is pretty flat. And we've got a house right there on flat ground. Well, this is in the flood plain. This is the flat ground right beside the river where the water is going to go first. This house is built in the floodplain, which means it's very susceptible to flooding. This is where the water is going to go when it comes out of the Chattahoochee River. This means that the people that own these houses in this floodplain likely have to pay extra money for insurance because there's a good chance their house is going to get damaged by floodwaters. So the Chattahoochee River is down there at the end of that road. And you can see that that area in there is all very flat. That's the floodplain. That's the flat area next to the river that is likely to flood when the river gets too much water in it. 
but if we come just a few hundred yards up the road you'll see a house like this and notice it's starting to go on the uphill that's not flat anymore so that's not in the flood plain which means that house right there probably pays substantially less money for their home insurance because they're uphill from the river and they're not very likely to get flooded. So here's the area where I was standing in. That's the intersection. And think about a house up here. You can see it's up in the hills. Even though it's pretty close to the river, it's not in that flat area. So therefore, it's not in the floodplain. You're going to pay less insurance. Houses in this area and in this area, they're right in that flat spot beside the river, right where the river is going to flood when it gets too much water in it. So likely their homeowner's insurance is very expensive there because there's a good chance they're going to get flooded. Now a hundred year flood. A hundred year flood, this is a vocabulary term, but, but hold hold on your definition for a minute. A, whole, a hundred year flood means that there's a one in a hundred chance that a flood of that level can occur in a given year. Basically, this is a really bad flood. This is a, a flood that is so bad that it's only about one out of one, every 100 floods. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't have one every year. It doesn't mean if you have a 100-year flood in, in 2020, it's not going to happen again in 2021. It just means the odds are not great. So really a better way to describe a 100-year flood would be saying it's a 1 in 100 chance of flood. In other words, it's a really bad flood that only happens about one in a hundred times. Here's an example of a hundred year flood. We had one here in Atlanta in September 20, uh, 2009. And you can see how bad this was. This over here, this was Six Flags, which is right beside the Chattahoochee River. It's in the flat area. It's in the floodplain of the Chattahoochee River. And the water came out of the river because it couldn't handle it all and it flooded Six Flags. And you see these people's houses all underwater. They lost their houses or they lost a significant value of their house because they had to have uh, so many repairs being uh, paid for so many repairs to be done because that's obviously very damaging to your house to be underwater. So what can we do to prevent these floods if we don't want to lose millions of dollars? I don't want to lose my house because it got flooded out. So even though it's natural, there are ways that we can help to control the impact of flooding. First thing we can do, we talked about this at length last week, manage the runoff, keep water from going into the river. And we can do that by sending it to a retention pond or allowing it to soak in the ground somewhere else, like a bioswale, hold it back in a rain garden, anything to keep water from going into the river, because the less water that goes in the river, the less likely it is going to flood. Here's where this presentation comes into play, and that is build dams. There's a, there are going to be times where it just rains a lot and the river is going to naturally want to flood. But if we build a dam, we can control the amount of water that's going into the river at any or going through the river at any amount of time. So we can help keep the water level in the river low enough to where it doesn't cause a flood, even if it does rain really hard. Going back to that area down at the end of Eves Road, you would think these people here have to pay a ton of money for homeowners insurance. You, you would think, man, they get flooded out all the time. But in reality, they don't because a little bit down that way is Morgan Falls Dam. And a little bit this way is Buford Dam. So these houses right in here, they've got a, a dam on both sides of them. So the river right there, right here in our area, is regulated pretty tightly. And it can be controlled so that it doesn't flood because there's a couple of dams right in the area. Now, another reason to build dams is about having enough water for our needs. Remember, we need water 365 days a year. We're going to flush our toilets every day. We've got to drink water every day. But sometimes we don't have enough water for our needs. We know that in this part of the country, it rains a lot. In this part of the country, it doesn't rain nearly enough but there's people that live out there where it doesn't rain well what do they do consider here's a dam let's let a little bit of water out but remember a dam stops the natural flow of water and what you wind up with is a huge collection of water behind the dam well that water is now just sitting there and i've got it to use for later when i might need it now think about this right here so this is Phoenix, Arizona, it's in the southwest where it doesn't rain very much. 
but it does snow a lot up in that part of the country. And when the snow melts, the rivers start to flow and they bring water downstream. The problem becomes after the snow is all done melting, the rivers will start to run dry. And that's no good if you live in that area because you need water 365 days a year. So there are times of the year where you'd have too much water and it would just be wasted. So what if we could do something to manage the flow of water? If we could, we could kind of hold on to some water for later in the year when I might need it. That's why we build dams. This is Hoover Dam. It's on the Colorado River. And you look at the picture. This is in a part of the country where it's very dry. It doesn't rain hardly at all. But a lot of people live there. So what they did was they built the dam. And as the melting snow water comes down, it hits the dam and it piles up. Well, now I've got a big bucket of water that I can dip into at any time of the year. And I've got water there ready for when I need it, whether it rains tomorrow or it doesn't. So reason number two to build a dam is to store water for later use. And this is very common in the West where rainfall is not nearly as regular as it is for us back East. Now, how common are dams and reservoirs? They're not rare. There are 8,100 or so major dams. I mean major, that means they're over 50 feet tall. In other words, the, the height of a five-story building or more. There's 8,100 dams that are at least that big. So they, you can see they're in all 50 states. These are not rare things. On the Mississippi River alone, there's 29 dams on the upper reaches of the Mississippi River. The Chattahoochee River has 13 dams along it. And the Chattahoochee River, when you build a dam, it backs up the water behind the dam. The water that is backed up behind the dam, that man-made lake behind a dam, is called a reservoir. A reservoir is a man-made lake, a man-made storage of water behind a dam. Now, Lake Lanier is technically a reservoir. Even though we call it Lake Lanier, there was no natural lake there to begin with. The water only piled up in that area because we built the dam and we made the water stop and collect and it made what looks like a lake. Technically, it's a reservoir because it's man-made. Now, do we have dams in Georgia? Yeah, we've got over 5,000 dams in the state of Georgia alone. So once again, to reiterate, dams are not rare things. They are very, very common. Here's some dams in our area. Big Creek, this is here in Roswell, Martins Lake. I sent you that. This is in Sandy Springs. And this is the largest, most significant dam on the Chattahoochee River. It's the Buford Dam, it's up at Lake Lanier. That's what makes Lake Lanier. This back here is Lake Lanier. It's a reservoir. It's a huge collection of water that was held onto and Lake Lanier is very important for Metro Atlanta because remember the Chattahoochee River is not a really big river. It doesn't have a lot of water in it, but we need a lot of drinking water here in Atlanta. The city has been growing and it really took off in terms of its growth after that, after that dam was built in the Chattahoochee River. And all of a sudden after the 1950s, Atlanta had plenty of drinking water for everybody because we had this big bucket of water that we could pull from at any time. So some disadvantages of dams and reservoirs. Why don't we just build all the dams we, you know, we can get our hands on and we will never have any water problems? Well, there's some distinct disadvantages. First of all, the environmental impact. When you flood the water behind a dam, you cover up the land with water. Anybody who was living on that land has got to move. Any animals that were there <laughs> get flooded out. Uh, it disrupts the natural environment. Here's an example of a town in uh, Venezuela. You can see they decided to make a dam and it, it covered up the town. Every now and again, when the water level gets low, you can start to see the tops of the buildings poking out the top. Here's another one, Grand Italy. You can see that there's the tower and here it is now. Now the Three Gorges Dam in China was built and it was a huge project. It covered up 13 cities. 140 towns, 1,350 villages, 1.2 million people had to leave their house because this dam was built and the water backed up and covered up where they lived. That's a huge negative of, of dams. That's why you just can't build them anywhere, anytime, anyplace. Now, here's another concern about dams is 
the sediments or the dirt that moves through a river. Rivers move dirt around. You've seen the Chattahoochee it looks muddy after rain. That rain, that all that dirt is going to wind up in the ocean. Well, the dam might stop the water temporarily and then let a little water through, but the dirt doesn't pass through a dam. The dirt gets left behind. And we have a problem that's called sedimentation. And this is any material, any sediments, any dirt stuff that is being carried and moved by the water doesn't go through the dam. You can see here, I'm looking at some little piles of little particles of dirt. And normally if that dam weren't there, they would keep on going downstream with the river. But we put the dam there and what happens is the dirt starts to pile up. And eventually the dam has a bunch of dirt behind it. Now, why is this a concern? Well, a couple reasons. One, most important one is now this dam's holding back dirt, not holding back water. Notice my, my reservoir is now shallower than it started off, which why did they build that dam in the first place was to store water, not to store dirt. So over time, these dirt, these dams get less efficient because they're holding back so much dirt in this process called sedimentation, which is the buildup of dirt or sediments behind the dam. This dam in, in uh, Utah, Arizona border has about 100 million tons of sediment trapped behind it. That's annually. It's about 30,000 dump truck loads every day of dirt that gets piled up into this reservoir behind this dam. Well, that means that reservoir, that lake, isn't holding as much water anymore. And why do we build it? To hold on to water. Now, there's some other environmental impacts. You change the water temperature. Because deep water is always cooler than shallow water, anytime you have a, a, a dam that has a river on it, the water ends up being colder, which changes the plant animal life. This is why when you go down the Chattahoochee River, for those of you that have been in the river, the water's always cold. Because Buford Dam is a couple hundred feet tall, the, the Lake Lanier is very deep, so the water stays very cool and the Chattahoochee River stays cold. You also lose water. You get evaporation, you get water that seeps into the ground or through the dam, so you don't that's the water you can't use anyway. Finally is erosion. And when you hold back the the, the, the water of the river, it changes the shape of the river, which changes the whole natural process of things. Dams can also break. Most dams in our country aren't the big fancy concrete ones, they're made of dirt. And dirt gets waterlogged. Water seeps in through the dirt, and eventually, if too much water gets into the dirt, they break. You can imagine what a dam break would do to a town. To, uh, it'd be an instant raging flood. And there was a very famous one in 1977, where up in Tacoa, Georgia, in the mountains, a dam broke because it had rained for days and days and days. And the dam finally got too waterlogged, and the dirt gave way, came running through town. Uh, 37 people were killed because it happened at night and people were asleep in their beds and the flood just came through and knocked down their houses while they slept. Now, there are some significant dams or reservoirs I want to show you. First of all is Hoover Dam. This is one near Las Vegas. It's probably the most famous dam in our, in our country and it forms Lake Mead, which is the largest reservoir or largest man-made lake in our country. And it's a good thing. As you can see this area how dry it is they need a lot of water there because it doesn't rain very much lake mead and hoover dam is one of the reasons why las vegas is such a big city until they built hoover dam hardly anybody lived in las vegas and why would you there was no water to drink but once they built the dam and they have this big lake now to get drinking water from sure why not you can live there lake orville dam i'll show you this one because this is the nation's highest at about 770 Feet. That's guys. That's that's not quite as tall as the tallest buildings in downtown Atlanta. Here's one in uh, Tajikistan, which is the world's tallest at 1,100 feet, which is about as tall as as the tallest buildings in downtown Atlanta. Here's one in Switzerland, 935 feet. And I like this one. It's a concrete dam, and you can see the people down at the bottom for some sense of scale. Now dams don't have to be tall; they could also be wide to hold back a lot of water. Now this lake here isn't very deep per se, but look at the amount of water that is being held back there. That's a lot of water to hold on to that we have now for future use. If it doesn't rain for a while, we still got water. If we have a drought, we still have water back there. 
that's a huge advantage to making dams. <laughs> this is our largest dam in Georgia. It's at Carter's Lake near LJ, and it's about 444, 445 feet deep. Now, this whole thing of managing water in rivers sometimes has consequences that we don't anticipate. And here's a big one. It's been in the news for a long time. It's gone all the way to the Supreme Court, and this is the fight that Georgia, Florida, and Alabama are having over the water in the Chattahoochee River. So we built the dams here like on Lake Lanier in Atlanta. We held on to a lot of the water. That means we didn't let the water go to Florida like it normally would have. city of Atlanta is growing so much that we're pulling more and more water. We're holding more and more water in our toilets, in our hot water heaters, and our swimming pools, which means there's less water going downstream in the Chattahoochee River. Well, the town of Apalachicola, way down here at the bottom of Florida, is where the Chattahoochee River ends. And where it meets the Gulf of Mexico, that's where they're upset. The fact that Atlanta is holding on to water because where the water meets the Gulf of Mexico, it mixes with the salt water and it makes brackish water. In Apalachicola, the mixture of the salt and the fresh water in Apalachicola Bay is just the perfect environment for oysters. If you haven't eaten oysters, it's a shellfish. It's a kind of an acquired taste. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't, but they are a popular seafood um, dish and they only do well in brackish water. They're not truly salt water organisms. They need a mixture of both. Well, about 10% of our, the, of our country's oysters come out of Apalachicola Bay and we get fresh water coming down from the Chattahoochee River that mixes in that bay and gives the right combination of fresh and salt water for oysters. Well, what's happening is Atlanta upstream is keeping too much fresh water. And so the water in the bay isn't the right mixture of salt and fresh for the oysters to thrive. And people down here are really ticked off about it because that's how they make their living. Like I said, 10% of, of all of the oysters in our country come out of that bay. And they've actually sued the state of Georgia and said, hey, y'all are holding on to too much water. We need that water. You can't have that much water behind the dam because it hurts us here. And it's gone all the way to the Supreme Court, and it's still a battle going on. So basically, this concept of the Chattahoochee Water Wars is basically a fight over how much water we hold on to in the river behind dams versus how much water do we let through and go all the way to the ocean. So once again, here's the key vocabulary and uh, concepts of this damn presentation. So if you have any questions at this time, please feel free to ask. Keep these organized. Take a picture of your results. Upload the teams for your daily grade.